point, we'll go ahead and get started with head coach Brian Kelly. Coach, would you like to make a statement or would you like to start with questions? Um, yeah, a quick opening statement. Uh, you know, obviously I'm disappointed for our players. Um, you know, you don't come this far and, and um, not want to uh, play your very best. And, um, you know, hats off to Clemson. Um, as the ACC champs, they earned it today. They were the better team. Um, they were much more consistent than we were today. And that's really the story. Um, consistency and performance. Um, we did not have that consistency and performance that we've had all year. Um, and some of it is uh, who we played today. Uh, we played an outstanding football team. Um, and uh, because of it, um, we weren't as consistent as a, as, as a football team as we've had uh, been. So um, very disappointing for our guys. Uh, Love the way they battled in the second half. Um, but again, um, you know, we let the second quarter get away from us. And uh, that was the difference in the game. So uh, got a really good football team. Um, there's no doubt this is uh, this football team is one of the four best teams in the country. and. Um, We'll, we'll leave the rest up to the committee. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up to questions. Brian, this is Eric Hansen from the South Bend Tribune. A couple of questions for That's you. Enough. One is, how were they able to flip the script on the rut, running differential, rushing yardage? The second is, how do you pick up the pieces at this point? Because you still have football left to play. Yeah, this, you know, again, I, I think, you know, we've got to watch – a little bit more of the film to, to, to really give you, a, um, you know, an exact uh, answer to the question. Um, you know, we, we came out, uh, moved the ball pretty effectively on the first drive, uh, mixed it up well. Um, I think, I think by and large, we stalled out um, a number of our drives um, in the red zone. And, and that's, that's a big part of this game in, in particular in the first uh, quarter where we had some opportunities, but we couldn't finish off drives, missed a field goal. And then, um, you know, again, got into a situation where our, uh, we, we were in first down situations. We were, we were not very good running the ball on first down. Um, we had some negative yardage plays. Um, so again, it's, it's the nature of, you know, playing an opponent a second time. They're gonna do some things. We're making some adjustments uh, on the sideline. And, uh, you know, again, trying to get back to uh, get a balance with running and throwing the football. Um, picking up the pieces, I think that's a bit, um, you know, over, um, over the top. Um, this is a strong football team, strong will. It's an outstanding football team. It's one of the best teams in the country. Um, they'll bounce back. They're disappointed. They've got to play more consistent. And um, I'm quite confident that they will. We'll go next to Pete Sampson. Brian, just curious if you had an update on one Kyle Hamilton, and also if you could speak a little bit about what Clemson did to you guys uh, in the in the past game with Amari Rogers, trying to get some good favorable matchups, and just how critical that was to the second quarter swinging the game. Yeah, I mean, obviously they they there were some favorable matchups. They're, they're very very talented, um, and you know I thought you know, a couple of instances where they were able to, uh, and Trevor Lawrence was able to use his eyes and get Kyle out of the middle of the field uh, to open up some, uh, some double moves and, uh, you know, some favorable matchups. Um, you know, they're very, very talented. He had time to throw. Um, and again, they made the plays. Um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, from our perspective, losing, you know, Hamilton in the second half and certainly uh, Nick wasn't available for us as well. Um, you know, you get a little thin back there, but the second quarter was the key and, and not fitting a couple of the, the cue runs was, was certainly key as well. Um, but I think by and large with, within the passing game, second half, I thought we settled into a better routine. It was really the second quarter where uh, he was able to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups, um, and then we made some adjustments. We'll go next to Tim Priester. 
Brian, six weeks ago, uh, when, when Book would escape the pocket, he was able to run vertically. Today, it, it was more horizontally. What, what did they do um, to keep him so bottled up and moving uh, you know, laterally as opposed to upfield? You know, their ends were upfield. They, they were not rushing you know, quite as hard off the edge as you saw. They were much more in a contained mode uh, to keep him uh, from getting outside. Uh, um, a nice job of, of minimizing uh, his ability to get uh, big chunk runs. Uh, so, you know, trying to keep him um, at bay was obviously part of the, the game plan. And they did it by the way they, uh, they rushed their front four. And then they brought a little bit more um, pressure from inside out uh, and flushed him out to uh, ends that were not um, upfield. They were, they were staying flat and to the level of the quarterback. We'll go next to Dennis Dodd. Brian, you talked about it a couple of times, but uh, just make your case about, you know, being in the playoff at this point. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got uh, two top 15 wins. We've got a win over this Clemson team that, you know, you know was number one in the country. I, I don't know that anybody has a resume that um, has those two wins. Um, and, you know, we've played 11 games. I mean, that matters. You know, playing, playing 11 games, um, you know, testing your team week in and week out. Um, you know, I, I think that in my mind, you know, you know, puts us as without question as one of the top four teams in the country. We'll go next to David Hood. Hey, uh, Coach. It, we always talk about the difference that Trevor Lawrence makes throwing the football, but his ability to run tonight on the design runs, the RPOs, how much of that also made a difference in some of their offensive success? Well, we talked about it after um, with the coaches. It, it, it's it's the difference maker. Um, his ability to run um, really stresses your coverage calls. Uh, it stresses a lot of things that you do in terms of your fits and where, you know, essentially you're trying to, um, you know, get him uh, to, to certainly – not be that kind of uh, player. And, and so what you're trying to do is bring some pressures uh, that eliminate those runs, but it just opens up some one-on-one -on -one matchups that are not, not favorable. Um, and, and so it's, it's a dilemma. And um, it, uh, it's something that we struggle with a little bit tonight. We'll go next to Hayden Adams. Hey coach, um, just wondering, you know, when it became apparent that your receivers were struggling to get open, did it ever, you know, go through your mind to maybe make some personnel changes, you know, maybe throw Joe Wilkins in there or, or something just to try and spice it up a little bit. And then my other thing is just why did it take so long to give Chris Tyree his first touch of the game? And, you know, it, it seemed to work out pretty well when he did touch the ball. Um, yeah, w w we didn't feel like our receivers were having, uh, a hard time getting open. Um, this this was much more about down and distance uh, and coverage, right? We were in so many third and long situations. When you drop more into coverage than, than you have out there, um, you could have five Jerry Rices out there. They're not getting open uh, as, as readily. So, um, you know, Chris Tyree's our, our, our back that we bring in um, when we feel like uh, – Kyron needs, Kyron needs a, a, a breather, and he got in there and bounced the play out there, but he's in the rotation. Um, and uh, just like he did uh, the last game we played, he, he broke off a 94, 96-yard run. But, you know, he's not the complete back that um, Kyron is yet, but he will be. He's, he's a good back. We'll go next to Andrew Adelson. Ryan, is the committee going to start taking a look at your resume um, and Texas A&M's resume and other teams that are going to be evaluating for the playoff? Do you feel like you guys are closer to what we saw against Clemson in November or what we saw tonight? Well, I think you look at a body of work in, in terms of what we've done all year. Um, you know, we played 11 games. Um, we've beaten uh, two top 15 teams. Um, you know, we uh, 
we obviously lost to the number three ranked team in the country tonight. Um, wasn't our best effort, but uh, consistently when you play 11 games and you have, uh, you know, a win over the number one team in the country, and then you win against an outstanding North Carolina team. Um, I don't know that you need to look any further than that. And we'll wrap it up with Patrick Engel. Brian, what was your message to the offense or kind of go, what was going through your mind in the first couple of drives when you guys are, are moving the ball but had some drives kind of sputter out there at the end? Well, consistency and performance is going to be um, what what's going to judge how, how this game finishes. And quite frankly, told them we've got to finish. We can't keep leaving points out here. And uh, there's only so much you can do at that point. You, you know, you've got to, you know, continue to stay positive with the guys and, and continue to, you know, look at ways to, uh, you know, get the ball in the end zone. And uh, so it really doesn't do you much good to, to be over there yelling and screaming. They know what they need to do. Uh, they needed to finish off some drives. We didn't do it. But, you know, we're all in this together. You know, we've got to, we got to coach better and, uh, you know, our players got to make plays and, you know, it's it, this, when you have a, a great football team, which we do, it, it, it's about consistency and performance. And we were inconsistent today for the first time all year. Um, we'll work hard in, in our preparation and we'll get back to being more consistent. All right. And we will end it there. Thank you very much, coach. Thank you.